Hello and welcome to a brief lecture on subject verb agreement and pronoun agreement. Much like run-ons and comma splices, both of these types of errors, the SVA and the PA, develop as writers try to write more sophisticated types of sentences. So we'll begin with subject verb agreement and then we'll move on to pronoun agreement. Please note that in both cases I've given you a page number from your textbook that you can refer to 617 for subject verb agreement, 622 for pronoun agreement. Certainly these are very brief overviews of these particular types of problems. I highly encourage you to spend some time <clears throat> looking at your textbook to try to understand these errors more, especially if what you get in this lecture seems insufficient. All right, so subject verb agreement. Um, the rule, very simple, I've done some abbreviations here to fit all this on the board. SS, singular subject, needs SV, a singular verb, whereas a plural subject needs a plural verb. Very obvious, even elementary. Some would say, uh, when you think about it in these terms, it just means that a boy runs, but boys run, right? So different uh, subjects get the corresponding types of verbs based on numbers. Interestingly enough, in many cases with simple present tense verbs, um, the singular verb has an S on the end of it where the plural verb does not. Um, <clears throat> anyway, some problem areas that we need to consider as writers. Now, you don't have problems with this, right? Again, this is fairly elementary and most people overcame these types of problems many, many years ago. So why is it that it continues to be a problem? Well, again, it's because we start doing more sophisticated things with our sentences. One thing that we start doing is we place more and more words between the subject and verb. See here, there's, there's no disconnect between the subject and verb. They're right next to each other, and so you can see the subject, you can see the verb, and you know, almost all the time, you're going to put the correct verb with it. But what about when we put a block of words in between the two? So look at this example. The games won by the intramural team is very few. So, in this case, the subject is games, and the verb is is. Well, actually, we recognize pretty quickly that that's incorrect, right? Because we wouldn't say the games is, we would say the games are. However, the reason that the error was made here to begin with, with the verb, is because is is right next to team. Well, typically, team would go with the verb is. You would say the team is on its way. You wouldn't say the team are on its way. So the fact that we put in these extra words here confused us because our eye and our ear is seeing and hearing this connection, team is, instead of games are. But are is the correct answer here because games is a subject. Games is a subject are is the verb. This is responsible for many of the subject verb agreement errors I see in student papers. Another common type of <clears throat> situation that can create subject verb disagreement comes from compound subjects joined by and. So you take what are otherwise two singular nouns, cheese and mustard, you put them together and all of a sudden you have a compound subject, right, joined by and. Cheese and mustard is served on all their burgers. Well, again, this is incorrect because we have more than one subject now, so that the singular verb no longer works. Cheese and mustard are served on all their burgers. Um, another area that can cause confusion um, has to do with singular subjects that appear in plural forms. Um, one common place to find this is with a lot of our academic disciplines, like say statistics. So you might write statistics, which ends with an S and sounds plural, putting it with what would otherwise be a, a plural verb. Statistics deal with different aspects of data, but that would be incorrect because statistics is a singular subject. It just appears to be plural. So you would want to say statistics deals with different aspects of data. Finally, I want to talk about inverted subject-verb order. 
This is a really common thing um, that many of us do where we will begin <clears throat> a sentence with a construction like there is or it is. When we do that, the actual subject of the sentence usually gets buried later on in the sentence. In this case, the circuit courts is actually the subject. However, circuit courts is plural, so we needed to say there are currently 13 federal circuit courts of appeal. Moving on to pronoun agreement. Um, the rule here is that a pronoun must agree with its antecedent. An antecedent is simply the noun to which a pronoun refers, right? So if you say, um, the boy got his treat, then his is the pronoun, boy was the antecedent. And those two things need to agree numerically. Notice both of these things, subject verb agreement and pronoun agreement, are about making numbers agree within our sentences. Again, this is something very simple, something that in essence you've known um, since you were in grade school. Still, we run into problems. Two very common instances that create problems for students with pronoun agreement. One comes from indefinite pronouns. Um, you might want to look up a list of indefinite pronouns in your textbook. Um, the ones that are really prickly for people are, are the everyone, everybody, anyone, anybody, those types of indefinite pronouns. So look at the first example here. Each of the neighborhoods had their own problems. It sounds perfectly fine, right? And, and in fact, in many cases, I think this is actually how a lot of us speak when we're not really thinking about correct pronoun agreement. But this is incorrect because each is singular. We think about neighborhoods, which is plural, but we really need to honor each in this case. So this should say its. Each of the neighborhoods had its own problems. Same thing in this sentence. Again, everyone, it just sounds plural. plural. It seems like a plural concept that when you say everyone, you're talking about this massive group of people. But the way it actually works out grammatically is that this is sing singular. And so many pronoun disagreements come from this. You'll see it in newspapers and magazines, but it is an error, and, and I want you to be able to recognize it as such. Everyone must know their place on the team. Well, in this case, there needs to be replaced with, it, it could be his or her, or just his or just her, depending on the team that you're referring to. I'm just going to go with um, her in this case. Everyone must know her place on the team, because again, this indefinite pronoun is singular. The other place that creates a lot of problems with pronoun agreement comes from non-specific antecedents. Uh, person is one that comes to mind. Students use that a lot in papers when they're trying to make sort of general examples of, uh, that go with a point they're trying to make. One is another one that gets used a lot. Um, and so, so often they get joined with a plural pronoun um, and so often that plural pronoun is there or they later on in the sentence. A person must face not their worst fears but his or her. Uh, one who does not follow the rules will not achieve not their vision, but his or her. Now, interestingly, with th this type of example, my <clears throat> advice to you would be not to always deal with the he, she, his or her, that whole kind of construction, which granted can be a, a little bit um, awkward, I guess, because it just seems unnecessarily long. We don't want to, you know, engage in any kind of sexist language or anything like that. So what's really just easier to do, since we don't have a, a, you know, a good unisex pronoun, is to just make these examples plural. And instead of a person, just change it to people. The people must face their worst fears. Um, you could even do the, the same thing here. People who do not follow the rules will not achieve their vision for success. That way you're not always trying to change the pronoun, instead you're changing the, the antecedent, which is often the subject of the sentence. All right, well that's a real quick overview of 
subject verb agreement and pronoun agreement. Again, there is more in your textbook on these corresponding pages. Um, you've got a handout um, that's available to you on Desire to Learn as well. So as always, please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.